Hi guys, today we're gonna to be talking about how to write your introductions for your research articles. So there's been kind of a series going on where I'm talking about how to write different sections of your research papers or research articles. So you can check out that series above, but today we're gonna to focus on your introduction. Before I get started, I wanted to let you know that I have a scientific research paper checklist that's going to help walk you through how to do every single part of your scientific paper to submit it to journals. The first thing I would suggest whenever you're working on your introduction is to make sure that you know your research story first before you start writing your introduction. This helps you by letting you know where your research paper is going to go, which is going to give you a much better chance of actually writing a really cohesive introduction that will lead nicely into your research. So for your research introductions, you want to be able to answer four specific questions. The very first question that you want to be able to answer is why is your field important? And so if you've seen other papers that I've done on research paper introductions, pretty much the first thing I'll ever tell you is that the first thing you need to do is tell someone why they should read your paper. And so the first part of that is why even is your field at large important? Why should anyone care about it? And why should they publish your paper and or read your paper once it's published? And so you can do this really simply by just saying either the impact of your specific field or what your specific field is important for. Once you've clarified why your field is important, you want to answer the second question, which is what is the background of your field or what background knowledge does your reader need to know to understand your results? Generally, whenever you're thinking about this, think about the major topics that your paper falls into and then write the basic background information that someone would need to know about those topics to understand what you're doing in your paper and why that's important within the context of your greater field at large. This is usually going to be a little bit more like a textbook style writing where you're basically giving them fact after fact, but you want to try and tell it within a story. So you want to make sure that you're leading them from one section of your paper to the next section and not just listing one fact after another. The other really important thing here is to not just include something because you know it. I think a lot of times we go, okay, we know X, Y, and Z, and so we're just gonna throw it in and include all of this information, but really that's not the information that your actual reader needs to know. So you always wanna be watching yourself every step through it and being like, okay, is this really something my reader needs to know, or is it just something that I know and I feel like I want to share it? Once you've answered those two questions within your research paper introduction, the third question you wanna answer is what problem is your paper solving? And so this is specifically telling the reader why your specific paper is important to read. They need to know the problem that it's going to solve before they hear how you solve that problem. This very quickly will show anyone the novelty of your paper because you're specifically identifying why you need this research. It immediately shows the impact and the novelty, which is going to make it so much easier for it to get accepted and generally easier for someone who's reading it to actually care about it and cite it later on. Different problems that you could be solving is developing a more advantageous method or filling in the gap of knowledge. So maybe we don't know about a certain thing. So you're gonna tell us that there's no papers that have really studied X, Y, and Z. And so we set out to study that and that's what we're gonna do in this paper. The fourth question that you need to answer within your introduction is how have you and others researched this problem? So once you know the problem you're researching, whether it's your specific paper or in this sub area of your field, you want to give people the context for what's been done before. This is generally finding those important papers that led specifically to your research and giving us a little bit of information about what those papers did and what they found so that we can then understand why you're conducting this study and we can better understand the results of what you found and their context within the greater scheme of your field at large. And then finally, end out your introduction with a paragraph explaining what you did in your paper and what they're gonna be able to learn and read if they continue reading. This is a good way to get people who are reading your paper straight through to keep wanting to read your paper because you've guided them really nicely from the importance of your field through what they need to know about your field 
into the problem that your specific paper is solving and then the context for how it's been looked at before and how you're specifically researching it. So now I want to jump into my own published research paper, and this is the same one I've been going through within this series, but I wanna jump through and show you where these different answers to these questions are located within my own introduction. So here is my first published paper, and you can see the first couple sentences here that I have highlighted are telling you why steroid and steroid analysis is important. And so I'm talking about the fact that steroids have a specific role in cellular signaling. As I started to write more and more, I started to refining my first sentence more and more. So more recently, my sentences would say something more like steroid analysis is important for forensics, medical diagnostics, and sports performance testing, or something like that, which makes it a little bit more clear the importance of it. But even back then, I still started out with the importance of my field at large. And so, and then I immediately jump from steroids importance into steroid analysis importance and talk about how they are potential biomarkers for a variety of diseases and their misuse to enhance performance. So this entire first two sentences is just me stating through why steroids are important as a molecular class and then why steroid analysis is important, which is what I'm going to be talking about in this paper. So the next things I want to do is go through the background, right? So what are the main topics that I'm talking about in this paper? The first one is steroids, obviously. And then the second one is their analysis, right? So, so I'm going to be talking about just general analytical chemistry, but then I'm also going to dive deeper into specifically ion mobility, which is the type of analysis that I'm using within this paper. So in the next couple sentences, I'm kind of doing this out of order, but in the next couple sentences, I'm actually talking about the problem that this paper is going to solve. So I'm talking about the difficulty in analyzing steroids. That's exactly what this research was aiming to solve. How can we create a better way to analyze steroids that is faster and can separate out these isomers really well, but very quickly as well. So that's what this whole section is all about is what are the problems with the current methods? And then I'm gonna talk about this new method that we're gonna look into and see if it's actually a good way to be able to separate out steroids. The next section that's highlighted in green is all about talking you through what eye mobility is. So now we're going back into that background information. This was specifically sent to a mass spectrometry journal. I didn't dive as deep into steroids because who I'm submitting this paper to isn't as focused on steroids as they are focused on the analytical challenges. So that's why I'm talking about the importance of steroids, but I don't actually give a really long history because my readers aren't going to care as much about steroids specifically. They're going to care more about the analytical challenges that I'm talking about. So you can see here, this is my background information that I'm talking about eye mobility. So I'm talking to them about different types of eye mobility and what eye mobility does. So now that we've hit the importance of my field, the problem that my paper is going to solve, and the background information, the next thing I need to talk about is how am I and others researching this problem. So this is going to go into kind of your literature review section of your introduction, where you're basically going to walk through the major things that other people have done to move this research along. So this next section is again talking about the different literature. So really what I'm doing is specifically saying what each paper is given to the field. I'm covering multiple different papers within this one paragraph because this is an introduction and not a lit review. I don't need to tell you everything that paper did. I just need to tell you what that gave to the field that led to this paper being done. The next section is really a mix of background information coupled with the how people have done this before. So I've made it yellow because the green is the background information section and the red is the um, how people have researched this before. So I'm specifically coupling in background information about this parameter called collision cross-sections, which is a big part of this paper in studying steroid collision cross-sections. So I'm giving them a bit of background so that they can then understand the context, so the different people who have studied this and what they have found related to it. So that's what's going on in this paragraph. And then, of course, my final paragraph is talking about what am I doing in this study? 
So I talk about how this study is furthering this body of work. That's a good way to preface that paragraph is basically saying how your study is contributing, increasing, furthering, whatever, you know, kind of action verb you want to use there, but basically showing how your study is actually enhancing the previous work you're talking about, which is the entire reason why you've included that previous work within your introduction, and then giving a little bit of information about what they're going to see within this study. So I basically talk about my two major findings that we were able to separate out some steroids using metal adduction, and then we found really good agreement with collision cross-section values that have been previously reported. Those are the two main conclusions that came from this paper, and so that's what I'm including in here as a part of this study. I'm also telling them about the specific steroids I'm looking at, and I have a figure here that goes along with it that you can see in the right-hand panel. And so that is essentially how you would write any introduction. If it seems like it seems pretty easy or simple, it's because it actually is. And it probably has always seemed so difficult because you've never quite known how to do it. In my case, when I first started writing introductions for the very first paper I wrote, not even my first published paper, I like didn't know what I was doing. And I remember sitting at a Starbucks for over eight hours trying to write an introduction, going and analyzing previous papers, and just trying to figure out what I should say. And after that eight hours, I only ended up writing one paragraph, and even that paragraph I deleted later. If you feel like writing introductions are really hard, it's really because you don't know what you're doing, which is fine, a lot of us don't whenever we're first starting research. And so hopefully this method is going to make it a lot easier for you to write your introductions and seeing how you can actually make it flow. If you're working on your paper and you want a little bit more step-by-step -step or even this information in written form, download my scientific research paper checklist. It's gonna help you walk through all of these things to be able to make it a little bit easier for you to actually write up your papers all the way through and submit and publish them. I hope this helped you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.